Good noonday. We're back and we're glad to be with you live from Virginia Beach. It's wonderful to be home once again. It is, it is, to be on the East Coast. Mary was able to get a haircut after 14 months. <laughs> the new Mary. Thanks be to God. And we had a good trip and glad to be here to do noonday prayers with you. Here we are. Page 103 in the Book of Common Prayer. And once again, we'll use Psalm 95, found at page 82, the Benite. And we'll finish uh, our Lenten reflections on the return of the prodigal son parable from Luke's Gospel. So let us begin. All right. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. And again, the Veneti, uh, Psalm 95. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow, bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our Maker. <clears throat> For He is our God. We are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to His voice. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. And our reading today comes from Jeremiah 29. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. When Babylon's 70 years are completed, I will visit you and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For, sure, <clears throat> for surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me, if you seek me with all your heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. I don't know of any more promising words in Scripture than uh, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for harm. To give you a future with hope. Even in the depths of the exile of Israel into Babylon, God spoke to his people. He didn't forget them. He didn't forget them, like the, the father in our parable of the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. Never forgot the prodigal son when he was away in a far land. The father remembered him. He had plans for his welfare and not harm and the father saw a future of hope for the son that had wandered off to distant lands. He had plans for both brothers all along. We've discussed over the last several weeks that both problem, both brothers suffered from a breach of relationship with the father. And, you know, Lenten season is a time to, to remember, to examine our relationship uh, with the father and with the other brother. The relationship, you remember, 
the, the cruciform relationship with the Father above and with one another, with our brothers. And so Jeremiah uh, reminds us of, uh, of the foundation under this parable uh, that God uh, is calling us back, always calling us back. Uh, he waits for us. Uh, he waits for each of us to call on him. He doesn't go running after the lost brother. The lost mm -hmm. brother has to um, acknowledge uh, that he needs to be back in relationship with the father. And he, he, so he waits for, uh, the, the parable ends with the father waiting on the older brother to come in uh, to the banquet. Remember, the older brother is jealous of the easy uh, return that the one brother had, and he doesn't want to go in and celebrate. He'd rather stand outside in his resentment uh, than to come in inside. And so uh, we end the parable uh, still waiting on the one brother. Um, but he won't turn away and he won't hide. He's present to both brothers. The father mm -hmm. remains the central figure of the story, present to the son that's coming home and present to the son, won't you come in uh, and celebrate for this brother of yours who was lost, has been found. He wants all their hearts. He doesn't want, uh, he's a jealous father in terms of sharing uh, his heart, he wants a commitment, is what I'm, mm. you know, he doesn't want lip service of what uh, we're going to, what the brothers are going to do. He's looking for, I want full relationship with you. And so we've examined over several weeks the different facets, sides of the brothers and how we might identify them. But I hope and pray that, uh, that you'll also discover within yourself not only the lost children of God, but also an identity of the compassionate mother-father that is God. We need also to identify with the God figure, the father-mother in this story. Our old friend uh, Henry Nowen, that I referred to lately, um, had this to say. He said, here is the God I want to believe in. A father who from the beginning of creation has stretched out his arms in merciful blessing, never forcing himself on anyone, but always waiting, never letting his arms drop down in despair, but always hoping that his children will return so that he can speak words of love to them and let his tired arms rest on their shoulders. He, his only desire is to bless. And so as we come to the close of Lent and we head into Holy Week and Easter, all the Father wants is to bless. And so our uh, time of Lent of reflecting on our own being and relationships uh, offer good promise for what is to come. Any thoughts, Mary? Um, <clears throat> just that uh, family relationships hmm. are tricky, <laughs> are complicated, um, but uh, I think in a family, there is always uh, an underlying tension. tension, but a love for each other as well. Uh, so that, you know, with some guidance, you can get through the complications, the trickiness, the tensions mm -hmm. that... Uh, happen whether you want them to or not um, it's funny how the spoken word can 
land on somebody's ears way different than what came out of your mouth, I think. Just the perception of what was said. So, um, if <clears throat> we can take anything from this, I think it's the fact that the father was, as you said, his arms were open, they were open to both boys, and um, there was the promise of both of them returning to the fold, so to speak. Well said, well said. Let's continue with our prayers for today. All right. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from, from evil. evil. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Amen. And now let's gather up our prayers together. Uh, if you have uh, thanksgivings, prayers, intercessions that you would like to share, type them into Facebook. We'll pray uh, together for those that are on our parish prayer list that have asked for our prayers. We pray for Katie Byrne, for John Harris, Yvette Gromley, uh, Pat Benton, Marilyn Bernstein, Carl and Julie Sturzing, Sid and Joanne Kilgore, Stephanie Luffy Kusek, Danny, Charlie, and Maria Swift, Patricia Cook, Shannon Briotti, James Hines, David and friend Noremi, Dean Rogers, Emily and Kim, Uncle Lanny, Mary's sister, uh, Sarah Hill, Ruth Rudolph, Rick and Robert Williamson, Pat Donovan, Cindy Bixby, Arden Reed, Cinda O'Connor, Carvel Taylor, Jessica Williamson, Jane Rodriguez, Stan Hopkins, Cliff Lewis. For our friends and parishioners resident at Atlantic Shores, uh, Bay Lake, um, Westminster Canterbury, and Harborview in Norfolk. For Hope Matthews, <coughs> Brian Hunt and Heather Hang Hunt, Meredith Guzman, Julius Ventura, Howard Hanchy, Linda Erickson, Amy, Pam Campbell, Ruth Ann, Donna Hudgens, Carol Hart, Bill Thompson, Joe Hughes, Martha Gentry, for Frank, and for Kelly, Gabe, and Gio, Alan and Carol Ormond, for God's vision of a beloved community to become our vision for this world, for peace in our nation and the world, for deployed folks everywhere, for medical and emergency personnel, for scientists working on solutions and working on distribution plans for the COVID vaccines. And we ask prayers for those that you have offered up in Facebook comments. And I believe we may celebrate some anniversaries and birthdays. Well, Harold Vanderwilt and Zachary Bowles. Ah. Happy birthday, Happy folks. Happy birthday, guys. And for anniversaries on those dates, I have no anniversaries for those dates. But blessings in the coming year to uh, Harold and Zachary. And it was wonderful to be with you again today. Gather up our prayers together and 
let's see, I won't, we won't see you next Friday because it's Good Friday. So next week we head into um, Holy Holy Week. Week. I'll be with you uh, Sunday, Palm Sunday, and we'll begin Holy Week together. In the meanwhile, be well, be safe, uh, sign up your reservations for church, and we'll see you this weekend. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. See ya. Take care. See you soon.